Okay, good morning. Let's learn how to use the pen tool. I'm going to try and break this down simply as possible. First things first, we need to open up a new artboard. So go to File, New, um, select, you can choose whatever size artboard that you want here, uh, width and height, your color mode, CMYK is if you're going to be printing it, if it's going to be for web use later, it's RGB. You can also go up here and select print or select web and it'll pre-fill things in for you. I like to use inches as my measurement when I'm doing something for printing. So I'm going to go to inches and then the orientation, you can select portrait mode or landscape. Let's do landscape. Once you're happy with that, then you click OK. And here's your artboard. A couple really simple things to learn when you're first opening up. Down here in the bottom left hand corner is a simple way to get your artboard onto your screen. So if you end up getting lost and you're way over here and you can't find your artboard anymore, you just use this little guy here, fit on screen, and poop, it'll pop you right back in here. Okay, so your pen tool, now depending on what version of Illustrator you're using, it might look a little bit different, it might be in a different spot, but generally most of your tools are going to be here on the left hand side. And then your extra tools for all kinds of extra cool stuff will be over here on the right. If you don't have this toolbar on the right, that's because you haven't gone in here yet to window and selected the various things that you want to see. So this is what I like to have up. I like to have my brushes, color, swatches, gradient, layers, pathfinder, appearance, character, paragraph, open type, stroke, transparencies, glyphs, symbols, and transform. Those are all kind of the workhorse um, <clears throat> commands that you'll use when you're using Illustrator. If there's something that you can't find, it's probably because it's in here and you haven't opened it up yet. You can also find tools in these drop downs various tools listed here. The ones that aren't highlighted are because you don't have anything open right now that you can do those commands to. Font. Depending on how many fonts you have on your computer, the fonts will show up here. I find this, um, it could be because of my version, um, is really not helpful because it's so small, it's so hard to read. I've actually made lists uh, for myself of the fonts. Select. Here's some effects that you can also add. View is everything that you thought it should be. Show rulers is handy. And you can have your rulers here. If you ever open up show rulers and the zero is not at the top corner of your page, like see here on the left hand side, this ruler is not lined up. You just click in that corner and drag and now your rules are lined up. See there? If you want to draw a line across for a rule, and this line is not going to print, this is just for your use, you click and drag and set up, say I wanted something at the one inch mark, and there is a guide. And this guide is not going to print unless you tell it to print over here. <clears throat> this is just for your use. So this is great if you want to center something on a page, you can find the center, etc. You don't want to see those guides, then you go to glue, uh, view, guides, and hide guides. What we want to do is learn how to use this little tool over here, which is the pen tool. And if you click on this and hold, you'll see a flyout menu. And this menu has a pen tool, it has an add anchor tool, it has a delete anchor tool, and it has a convert anchor tool. And I'll be looking at all of those various ones today. So before we even place an image on here, let's just play around with the pen. <clears throat> so click on your pen so it's active. Your 
your uh, icon will now turn into a, like a little pen icon. So if you wanted to draw a straight line, you would just click for your first point and click for your second point. So when you're using the pen tool, think of it as you're adding points at the areas where the line changes direction. So for example, if I wanted to draw a square, I would go, this is my corner here, this is my corner here, corner, and corner, and then I need to close it off here. Okay, so I got a square here. And if I want to know um, what colors I'm using, you can either use your flyout over here. And this shows that you've got the inside the fill. If you hover over something, it'll actually tell you what it is. So if you hover over this, you can see it says fill is white. And then here, click to activate it says, and this is black. Illustrator is pretty good because it does help you along. <clears throat> if you double click on this, it will open up a whole palette that you can choose from. If you happen to know your hex color that you want, this is your where you put your hex color or if it's an RGB color, you can put that in there. Or if it's a CMYK color, you can put those values in there. So it's a pretty nice way if you already know what color you want you can insert your color values in here. If you don't know and you just want to pick from here, you can do that as well. So let's make the outside green. And I don't want an outline on this square at all, so I'm going to click on here where it says None. The other place that you can do this is over here on the toolbar. You can see it has the same thing here, and this is a nice quick tool if you just want to change it from a solid object to an outlined object. And you can also deselect and select colors in here as well. I like this one over here. It's a little easier to see and you can play around with your CMYKs. This is just kind of a quick thing if you're drawing something and it's coming out as a solid and you actually want it to be a line instead. Okay, so if we want to get rid of that, you just simply click on it to activate it, hit delete. If you ever wanted to do undo something, you can use Control Z, which I believe is, on a Mac is Command Z. Z. <clears throat> so let's put a um, picture on our desktop and uh, we'll start to trace it. So instead, place it over here. Place. Placing is when you want to place an image or a file into the file that you're working on. I select my picture and then I hit there we go. Let's close this because Illustrator sometimes happens a conniption if you have two things open. So again we've got this bigger than our screen. So let's go in here to our artboard double click and then go to fit on screen and there we go now it's the same size as our artboard okay so click on your picture it will show you up here that you've got a linked file it'll show you the name of the file it'll show you the color profile that the file is created in which is which is RGB which is usually for web so I want to lock this so I'm going to hit object lock selection so now I I can't do anything to it it won't let me move it it won't let me click on it this is important to know because sometimes when you open up a file in Illustrator whoever's worked on it previously has locked layers and you can unlock them either by going to object unlock all or going to your layers and you can see there's a little lock there. You can unlock it from here as well. There's two different ways to unlock it. And actually, you can lock it over here too. All right. Tracing. Select your pen. Make sure your pen tool is active. 
And it doesn't really matter where you start to trace. I like to start on a more of a straight edge. Let's zoom in a little bit. I want to go in a little closer to this guy. Go here. Click on a point. There's my first point. And then I'm going to select another line. And I'm going to click, hold, and drag. So I have these handles coming out. Click, hold, and drag to the next one. Now you see how I've got, this is showing a, a fill instead of a line. I want to switch that around. Click, hold, and drag. Click, hold, and drag. So you basically, you're just selecting points where the line changes direction and you want to click, hold, and drag. When there's a sharp angle, sometimes I won't do the, the drag part, I'll just do a click. And I'll show you why once we get to the editing part. So this is just finding that outline, click, hold, and drag all the way around. I'm going to try and do this as quickly as possible so we're not wasting a whole lot of time here. And this just takes practice. The more you do it, the more you'll understand how this tool works. It's like anything. Practice, right? Practice builds confidence, builds competence. Going down the head part. I'm going to get this little swooshy thing in the main. So we'll do that. We'll come back here. Swooshy of the back. Here. here. Don't go too far. Swooshy of the tail. And it's hard to see from this distance exactly how close we're getting to the line. So we'll look at that when we zoom in. My initial tracing is usually pretty rough. We're just getting all the basics in. And depending on how detailed you want it, then you can go back in and adjust everything. Here, down the legs, around. And then make sure you find your first point when you're finishing off and click into that to make sure that it's a joined object. Sometimes if you're this far away looking at it, you can miss it. The way to check is just to go here, let's reverse it. There's a basic outline. That's actually a pretty good outline. And if you're just doing a rough silhouette that you just want to put onto something, I would say that that's pretty good. If you want to really get into the detail, then use your zoom tool. Go right in close. And let's take a look and we can make some adjustments. If you're concerned about all these little bits here, we can fix this. So here's the thing. You've got two arrows. One is a selection tool, which is the dark arrow. arrow and you can find that one if you're somewhere else Say I'm on my paintbrush and I want that tool. Well, for me, it's just V and A. V is the selection tool. A is your direct selection tool. So the difference between them, the direct selection tool, think of it as it's sort of more a fine pointer. 
So you can select individual points and you, and move them around individually. See, I can move this anywhere I want to. I can move it up here. And then I can also use this tool to adjust the handles. And the handles, of course, will adjust the angle. Let's go in really close here. I'm going to show you something. So here's my anchor. I'm going to put the anchor at the top of this point. And it kind of dips in here and dips in here, but I don't have another point that I can pull down into that direction. So in that case, you hit your plus, and that will turn your pen into um, the add anchor tool. Sorry, I actually don't know the names of these because it's so second uh, nature to me sometimes that I don't even think of it. So I'm going to add on my line another direction point. Go back to my A tool, which is my direct selection. Find that point right here click and drag it over to where I want. See now what I did is I created an arc and I can adjust that arc and I can adjust here. If you're finding that you're fighting with this, because this just wants to be a straight line all the time. It wants to, this handle and that handle want to stay parallel to each other. But if you don't want that, then you go to your Convert Anchor Point tool, which you can also get to by hitting Shift-C or Command-C, I think, in a Mac. And see this one now. Now I can move this handle independently of this other one up here, where before, if I'm just using my Direct tool, yeah, see, we broke it apart, right? As soon as you do that, it breaks it apart. So now I can add, if I wanted more detail in here, let's add another point. Hit my A so I can move this one. And this move this, see, because these is together. So now I want to move it back, okay? So the more points you add, the more detail you can get, but it also is going to add to your work as well. So it depends on what it is that you want to achieve for that particular drawing. Go over here. There's a dip here and I don't know, do I have a, there we go, there's an anchor here. Let's move this anchor into the dip. Ah, so see what I did? I actually moved my picture. I forgot to tell you to lock your picture. So let's go back to fit on screen. See, my picture is unlocked. Control Z is undo. I think it's command Z. So if you ever do anything and you didn't meant to do that, just undo it. You can also go to edit and you can undo or redo things in here. So I want to lock this picture so it's not moving around while I'm playing with my drawing. So go to object and lock selection. There we go. Now, if you can't see, I, I made this line green. If you can't see the color that your line is, just change the color of the line. Can we see the white? We can see the white a little bit better. Let's make it um, this blue. How about pink? Yeah, we can see the pink much better. You can also make the line thicker. But I'm going to zoom back in again. Let's go down here. Zoom in more. This little area up here needs a little bit of changes. So here now I can push that all the way in and that will move that line. This here I can change. See I can change the angle here but it changes both angles. This one, can move it in a little bit. This one here, I'm going to actually move that all the way in and see now it's more of a sharper turn. This one's already a sharper turn. 
We're missing a bit of his lip here. And then I think I might want to add, let's go in closer so we can see. I may want to add, let's add a point here. Go to my direct selection tool and then I can move it in. So, I mean, you can get as fussy as you want on these. In general, I find if you're just going to be doing silhouettes with these drawings, it all depends on how much detail you want to include in your silhouette. So this one here, bring it down, over. There's like a little divot thing in here, so let's add move this down first, add an anchor, and move it in, we can adjust this one here, there we go, let's add an anchor over here as well, so just hit your plus on your keyboard, and then your A for your direct select, move that in, So yeah, so you can go all the way around and adjust each and every one of your little dots. If you want to see what your silhouette looks like, just make it solid. And I think that's pretty good for a silhouette. Now there's two things you can do with this. You can do what you intended on doing is just basically drawing silhouettes. Or if you wanted to cut out this horse from the photo, you can do that too. So you have to make sure now that you unlock that photo. We locked it before. That once you lock something, you can't do anything to it. So if you're trying to do something to a picture and you don't know why it's not working, it's probably because you still have it locked. <laughs> okay, so now if you want to cut out that shape from the photo, what it's called is called, it's called a clipping mask. So in order to do a clipping mask, you need to select both of these objects. So this is your silhouette object. This is your photo here. An easy way to select both is just to click and drag across your screen until you see both things highlighted. Or you can go here and go select all. On Windows you can right click and a little flyout menu will show up. It'll say make clipping mask. Or you can go to Object, and Clipping Mask is also there as an option, Make. So if you hit Make, there you go. Now you've got your horse cut out. And now it's a brand new object. And then you can use this on anything, really. Now if you wanted to save this for printing, If you want to keep it as a vector file, you would just save it as Illustrator or PDF. So you go File, Save as Illustrator and give it a name. Or you can go Save as PDF and give it a name. Which I recommend if you think you're going to be using that silhouette over and over, keep your vector files. Vector files don't take up a lot of room. They're really, really small. So don't worry about uh, using up room on your computer for that. If you want to now take this and make it into something that you can print onto, uh, say, a bag or whatever, you can go to File, Save for Web and Devices. Okay, and then this comes up, and I like to see what I'm doing. So I go over here in the bottom left, Fit on Screen. And then over here on the right, you can choose GIF, you can choose JPEG, you can choose PNG, and there's two different PNGs. I usually just use P 
PNG 8 because it will simplify down the colors. PNG will give you a transparent background which is ideal if you only want this object to show up. If you want it to have a white background then choose JPEG and the white background will be the size of your artboard. So if you don't want the white background to be that big, you come out of here and then you can go back in and you can resize your artboard. Try not to cut his ears off. Actually, I think it's a girl. Okay, file. Fit on screen. There we go. Now we've got less white space around there. We're going to save it as a PNG. Hit save. Find where you're saving it. Give it a name. And there you go. And that's it. It's pretty basic, pretty easy. Um, the pen tool is neat. You can do freeform drawing, all sorts of weird little things. This doesn't have any color on it right now, so that's why you can't see it. Let's give it a line. So yeah, so I mean, you can do all sorts of stuff with your pen tool. If I wanted to uh, take the mask off, that's again, that's pretty easy. You can either right click release clipping mask or you can go to object clipping mask release and it'll take that off. You can get rid of your picture completely. And there's just the silhouette left and your outline. Now I knew there was a silhouette there, but if you ever get to this point where you know that there's something there but you can't find it, you can also go to View, Outline, and it will show you everything that's on your artboard. And this is a great tool that very few designers use, but they should use it because it will help them to clean up their artboard. So many times I open up somebody else's art and they have all kinds of crap all around the outside of it that they just left there because they were too lazy to get rid of it. So this shows you everything that you've got that you may not be able to see. So you can do outline, you can do preview, uh, overprint preview, pixel preview. All those are just ways of viewing your artboard. I think this is solid. So there you go. That is the basics of using your pen tool.